Hello everyone and welcome to another video by Vintage Furniture Guy. Today we're going to share some of our thoughts and answers to questions we receive on our website and our other videos about one of the most popular furniture brands in America, Ethan Allen Furniture, specifically Vintage East Ethan Allen Furniture. So let's begin here. Ethan Allen Furniture Company still remains one of the most beloved furniture brands in our country, and it has a long history. Personally, we love vintage Ethan Allen furniture from years ago. It usually shows incredible craftsmanship. We have quite a bit of it in our own home. It lasts, it has to be 40 or 50 years old. It still looks great, it's comfortable, it's fantastic. Um, in this video, we're gonna talk about what actually we believe makes the company great, and the answers to very specific questions we receive. Um, and we think the furniture giant is a legend. If you're new here, first off, welcome to our channel, Vintage Furniture Guide. Um, we talk about celebrated American furniture brands from the 20th century. Uh, if you'd be so kind, please subscribe to this channel. If you love vintage furniture or you have questions. If your questions are about Ethan Allen and we don't answer them, uh, be sure to leave a little note in the comments and we'll try to our best to answer your question. Okay? So now on to today's video subject, Ethan Allen Furniture Company. Ethan Allen has its roots in the great state of Vermont. Like Ben and Jerry's ice cream, skiing, maple syrup, and other wonderful Vermont things, Ethan Allen has developed a very special spot in the nation's hearts and minds. And uh, I like Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I like skiing and I love pancakes with maple syrup. And I guess I love Ethan Allen furniture as well. In fact, most people today recognize and cherish the name Ethan Allen, but few people know how old the company actually is. You see, it all started with two brothers-in-law, Nathan C. Ansel and Theodore Bamwitter, way back in 1930. Nathan and Theodore saw an opportunity and decided to buy a company that had fallen on hard times, the Beecher Falls Furniture Company. The company was producing mostly solid maple wood furniture back in those days. The two brothers decided to buy up the small workshops and rename the company after the Revolutionary War hero, Ethan Allen. The Beecher Falls Furniture Company, you usually see their label with like a, a maple um, leaf. Like, a, like the Canadian flag. It's very high quality. It was very nice. Most people in Beecher Falls, Vermont worked for Ethan, uh, the Beecher Falls Furniture Company and then became the Ethan Allen Furniture Company. Um, I do believe it was the first factory they bought and the first one they closed when things started to diminish in the United States as far as manufacturing. Uh, the name Ethan Allen they believed was well suited for a furniture company. After all, from the 1930s through nearly 50 years of business, their co new company focused on American colonial styles. Looking back on early colonial furniture, Ethan Allen made plenty of traditional furniture and marketed their pieces as sturdy, functional, and stylish. As the baby boomer generation boomed and bought furniture, furnished houses, Ethan Allen represented a respectable, stylish, and quality brand for American homes. As mass-produced furniture goes, it's really one of the best brands. Um, it's a, it's a, what they would call a production furniture. They come up with a line, they find a way to mass-produce it, just like a car or something, and uh, for lack of a better description, crank it out. But it's very well-made furniture. All right, so let's start with some of our questions. Our first question comes from a guy named Michael. Hello, Michael. He says, I have my parents' Ethan Allen, Royal Charter Oak, trestle dining table, and chairs. He believes it was dated 1976. It is the darker finish. Before, Ethan Allen made the finish lighter in the early 1980s. The table has a few light watermarks. Do you have any advice on how I can remove the marks without totally refinishing? Well, first, uh, you know, it's in the name. It's Charter Oak. They also... Don't confuse it. Back in the early 70s, they made a pine version as well. It looked the same. I guess to try to have a better price point. Uh, the softer wood, it's not as good as the charter oak. But we get this question a lot about the watermarks. I don't want to go sideways. Um, 
everybody would give the same advice to. Try a product called Restore Finish by Howard's. You can find it at Lowe's or Home Depot in the paint department. It might be nine or ten dollars. It comes in different colors. Um, it doesn't really change the color of your furniture, but it it's made to match to make the scratches or something look similar so that it goes away. Where I would say a product like um, Okay, Michael, our best answer is going to be to try a product called Howard's Restore Finish. You can find it in Lowe's or Home Depot in the paint department. Follow the directions on the can or look up a YouTube video about using it. It's very simple. We like it better than Old English because Old English is basically a cover, sits on top, can be wiped off. Howard seems to be more of an oil, gets into the wood. Doesn't really change the color even though it comes in different colors. In our store, we use dark walnut pretty much on everything when we run out. It looks great. It makes pieces look handsome. It's very good at getting out white rings and furniture. The only thing I would say is feel the white ring. If you can feel the finish bubbling or gone, it's not going to do anything. You'll have to restore the piece and get it stripped and redo it. Otherwise, try try the Howards. If the Howards doesn't work, Take a terry cloth towel with a iron on the steam setting. Try to shoot some steam in there without melting the finish. That usually lifts the white ring out over time. If it's been there a long time, it could take some time. Maybe 10 applications, 20. I have done it on a table for an hour once to get the white rings out, but they will come out. A white ring is, is water or moisture trapped in the finish and the layers. So it, it can come out. Um, Try to Howard's liberally, it will work. Move it in the direction of the grain, and afterwards, make sure it, it'll look good. When you're done, you still need to put a coat of wax on top of it. We like beeswax, Howard's makes that as well, and it's pretty easy to use, and then just buff it off with an old t-shirt or something, that's what we usually do. Next question, Ellen writes, she has two bedside tables with Ethan Allen names stamped on the inside of the drawer. She wants to know how she can find out more about the vintage and the wood used in the tables. They're very well used, and I might consider having them refinished if they're worth the expense. Okay, it's a couple of questions. Most likely your end tables are solid cherry or maple, if they're made by Ethan Allen Furniture, from especially vintage ones. Um, generally, if you're handy enough to refinish your tables, then of course, redo them and enjoy them for years to come. They're very solidly made. I would tell people to pay somebody else to restore your tables. It's going to be quite pricey, four or five, six hundred dollars. Um, you could probably find new tables, new vintage tables, at an auction in better condition for anywhere from fifty dollars a pair to one hundred and fifty dollars a pair. Uh, at times, maybe more, but that's generally, typically in two thousand and twenty-two, the price point. Um, so if it's worth the expense to refinish them, if you're not going to resell them, it's if you love them, by all means do them. If you think you're going to refinish them to sell them for a profit, no, it's it's. I'm going to tell you, it's not worth it. They're they're what they call painter pieces. People that paint furniture, chalk paint, or whatever they do, they want wild colors. They they usually just paint those pieces and recycle them and use them again, and it, that would be fine. Um, Sorry, I don't have a better answer, but that would be my answer. Uh, next question is from Sherry. And Sherry says she has a drop leaf dining room table that her folks bought when they were married 65 years ago. Well, I'd love to hear that. 65 years? That's a long time. I, I'd like to be with my wife 65 years or longer. That would be fantastic. Um, 65 years. Wow. God bless you. Um, it says Ethan Allen... Well, anyway, back to her dining room table. It says, Ethan Allen by Baumwitter, made in Vermont. Would you be able to tell me any history of this piece? What kind of wood it might be? And what its value might be? She's thinking about having it refinished. And she says it would be quite a job. Would it be worth the cost to do that? It's probably going to cost $600 to $1,200 to have it redone. If it really means something to you because it was your parents... That's great. If I was going to buy a wrecked bomb winter, which I have, 
if it doesn't have gouges in it, it's just the finish is gone, it's going to cost us a couple hundred in products to redo it. And uh, on the open market, the table might be worth in perfect condition, refinished. 700 to 1200 dollars that doesn't mean we're making that it just that would be what it would sell for and then we would have to minus any commissions on the platform we sold it on any marketing costs the delivery fees so yeah if you want to keep it it's a great table bomb Witter, one of the original ethan allen partners had really great style and made a lot of beautiful furniture um so that would that's that would be my answer to you Marsha wants to know, she has her parents' Ethan Allen Maple 4 poster bed, header and footer. <laughs> a lot of parents passing it down. It is heirloom furniture. Uh, she says that her parents bought the bed in 1942. She says it's in still in very good shape. What would be the value of these pieces? Well, I guess I don't see the size here. Um, you know, a full-size bed isn't as desirable as a queen or a king-size bed. Um, also, you're going to have to have the rails still be... You say it's in great condition, but to us, great condition is not only to finish, but the rails are still tight on the bed, like solid, which most of the time Ethan Allen is, but that doesn't matter. And you're also going to have to have nice wood slats underneath to hold the box, box spring, you know, a mattress on top. Because today, wood's expensive. But just to replace that's going to cost you, say, four slats from a store, cut down, $100, $150. Um, wood's crazy right now. Again, right now it's 2022. Um, she wants to know what the value would be. All right. Straight up answer, great condition. A really tight bed. Uh, we sell by Ethan Allen Furniture for about $600 online if it's a queen. Full size bed, we would sell it for about four hundred eighty five dollars. We haven't seen yours, so that's a, that's a rough estimate. Selling a bed like that on Facebook or Craigslist, expect to get maybe about one hundred fifty dollars at auction. The beds again, depend on the condition. At a fast auction sale, it's going to sell for anywhere between fifty and four hundred dollars, depending on their audience. An auction house, you have to remember, is going to charge you about 25 to 50 percent commission. Most auction houses aren't going to come to your house to pick up one piece of furniture like that. They're, they're going to want your whole house. You'll have to bring it to them. Um, a consignment shop, probably the same thing. They're not going to come and pick it up for you. They're, they're, they're going to sell an Ethan Allen bed between 250 and 450 dollars, depending on the size, full size queen or king. And you'll probably have to give up about 50% commission to the consignment shop for their work. You know, nobody's going to sell your stuff for nothing. But we like it, but, you know, it's it, you're not going to get rich selling it. Uh, let's see, Deborah writes, When she shopped Ethan Allen in the 1980s, everything was cherry wood or mahogany, or some other quality wood. But now she sees pieces, do not identify the wood, and she also notices the items she purchases recently seem to be a very soft wood. What year, she wants to know, did they stop using better woods? I think most of the furniture companies, Ethan Allen is not an exception, made cheaper lines of furniture. And like I said, I've seen a lot of pine furniture, very soft pine, from Ethan Allen in the early 70s, late 60s. Um, I'm sure even at that time they were trying to find a way to you know, have a better profit margin. So today, a lot of companies, just to stay competitive, and that includes the quality furniture brands, began importing many pieces of furniture, and they, they stain them in the United States or finish them off in the United States so they can say they're made here. I'm not quite sure if Ethan Allen is doing that, but a lot of companies do it. And that started probably in the 1980s, and the practice grew out of control in the 1990s. And in the last 15 years, there's a, it's grown out of control. There's a lot of um, Vietnam-made furniture, which really isn't that bad, but it's still imported. I, I wouldn't even be able to tell you what kind of wood it is. I used to have a joke saying it's it's bossa wood or make up a word. And you're like, what's that? But it's commonly found in Southeast Asia to make it sound exotic. It, it's, it is what it is. Um, it's not very, usually very good. You're not gonna pass it down. Today, fine cabinet shops, they still make 
great, great quality American made solid wood furniture and any kind of wood you want, walnut, oak, uh, maybe mahogany is going to be very expensive today. Um, the prices would scare most consumers today. Chairs will start at maybe, if you're lucky, $2,000 up to $4,000 for one dining room chair. Table's the same. I just had like a Amish made dining room set. They're still making them. It was fantastically made. The table's about $3,000. The chairs are another $3,000. The cabinet's about $4,000. So you can, there's not going to be a mass market for that in today's consumerism. It's just not there. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not great, not sought after. That's why we sell it used. We, we want to find it and sell it at a price point that people like. Um, that's that's the best answer there. Um, you have to remember, Ethan Allen, we noticed today, uses a tagline, Made in America, on some of their pieces. And I think that's to introduce some of their imported pieces so that they can use a tagline, Made in America, or... I also see an Ethan Allen worldwide, um, which is, I guess is a way to cover up that it's really made somewhere else. Um, I don't run their factory, but that would be my best my best answer to that. And we also know that Ethan Allen has made a big push to sell directly on their website, uh, not necessarily in their stores or other furniture stores. And that's an attempt to cut out the middleman. If you have to pay commissions to a furniture store, it's going to be really hard. Um, we did meet with an old time furniture salesman and he had a great way of looking at it. Everybody used to look for a very good maker like Ethan Allen and you would give him a good price and then he would try to sell it to them. Today, because of smartphones, if you did the same theory, some, if, if I gave you a price, say $500 on something, you would just look it up on your smartphone and instantly find the cheapest price in the country and expect this guy to match it. There could be a lot of reasons. The one you're looking at could be a discontinued, it could be a blemished, it, it might be right outside the factory and there's no cost of shipping. There's there's a lot of reasons for that, but they say they can't be competitive. So a lot of furniture stores today like to import what we call white label Korean furniture. They slap their own sticker, their own label on it so that that you can't find the, the best price. The best price is their price because they're the only ones selling it. Um, but when we look at good quality wood furniture brands for our store, most of the time we're going to find, as far as vintage furniture, the stuff from the 1950s up to about the 1990s, maybe. It really cuts off in the 1980s when companies like Harden went out or got sold. Imported furniture, most of it we frown at. It, it, it's made from fast growing, undried, unaged wood. It's going to crack in your house from the moisture or lack of moisture. Uh, to us, old growth, slow growth, American wood is extremely desirable, always has been. It's going to be much heavier and dense. Your furniture is going to last you a long time. That's about all we have today. Uh, again, if you have any comments, put them down there. If there's something you didn't like or something that's missing, put it in the comments. I appreciate your time and thank you again.